Hi, sa mga viewers ng Kurt TV, more power po sa inyo. Mir Vico is here. Sorry. Just just setting up the Facebook Live. Sorry, yeah. Give me, give me a couple of minutes. I think we're live already. We are. We are. Okay. okay. All right. Cool. Okay, then. Wow. Blockbuster. You're like... <coughs> <laughs> Wait lang. Wait lang ha. Para right. maganda ang gagwapo niyo for to si Mayor. <laughs> Guys, just Wait to lang. remind you that 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 we are now live on Facebook, so um, so that you're all aware that um, it's all recorded and people can see it. So just a heads up. We are. We are. On Facebook, so um, so that you're all aware that um, it's all recorded. Barnes, later you might have to mute yourself. So all right. oh, no. I'm so muting myself now. That, um, it's all recorded. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Hi, Barnaby, diba? Barnaby. Yes. Hi, Mayor. Yeah. Hi. Let us. Uh, Mayor Vico, it's uh, going to be Jab uh, of Al Jazeera, who's going to be moderating this uh, this forum. Hi, okay. Good morning. Your Jam. Okay, hi. Yes, yeah, and yung formal po malad. We met at the British Ambassador. Right, dinner. right. Oh, yeah, I remember you were sitting to my right in front. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Mayor, thank you so much for joining us. Um, this is really a good opportunity to... Uh, ask you a lot of questions and everyone is so eager to to hear from you um just to let you know that you we have been doing this since the lockdown we've been moving our forums online and the foreign correspondents association of the philippines has also allowed members of the local press and other observers to join uh, but only members of the foreign press and if there's time the local press are allowed to ask questions so okay. you are also live on uh on the foca page and we have about 32 participants already. So, okay. yeah. We're live on Facebook now, is that correct? Yeah, you're live on their Facebook page and also on Zoom. You, you can also share that if you like. <laughs> um, okay. okay. So, there. So, shall we get started? Sure. Okay. All right. Uh, would you like to have an opening statement or you want to get going with the questions already? I'm all good and ready. Okay, great. All right. Good morning, everyone, for joining us at our ninth uh, Foreign Correspondents Association of the Philippines Forum on Zoom. And as you know, we've been innovating, trying to find ways to get the stories uh, uh, as, as soon as, um, as much as possible, despite this lockdown, despite the so-called social distancing, we have no less than Mayor Vico Soto, who has broken the 27-year reign of the Eusebio Sinpasig. And he has basically been seen as a breath of fresh air in the murky world of politics. And of course, Mayor, your first initial big test uh, as mayor is this pandemic. Um, thank you for talking to us and thank you for being on our FOCAP Zoom. Right, thank you. Okay. So I'll throw in the first question, Barnes. Can I do that? Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Jav. Yeah. Mayor, Sorry, I'm gonna have to mute my. I'm gonna have to mute myself because there's echo from the Facebook Live. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, Mayor Vico, uh, there over the last few days, especially yesterday, we've seen local government officials reach out to uh, state forces, law enforcers, 
to try and help them, they say, clamp down on those as described as pasawais or those who do not follow the quarantine rules. Um, there was a very strong statement from the PNT police chief basically saying that they are going to continue and start arrests um, and that the possibly some will be detained uh, for as long as six months. Now, you know, the first guidance of President Duterte when he started the lockdown was to for, was for LGUs to craft your your own policies, essentially. What is your take on on the current security situation, and what would be your approach in Pasig? Right, our uh, main challenge in Pasig is that our our barangays are very different from each other. We have uh, we have some areas that are affluent. Uh, there's or really no problem with peace and order. But we have other barangays that are very difficult to control. Uh, it's very challenging to keep people uh, from the streets. Uh, we have areas that, you know, you know, we, we our, our peace and order officers go there, our PNP, our police uh, make the rounds, and then everything is okay. And then 30 minutes after they leave, it's, it's back to, uh, so it, we really need stricter measures in these areas. And, uh, we have been uh, increasingly stricter uh, as the situation calls for. But I have to admit, there are really some pockets in Pasig where it is very difficult to control. And we have been asking for the assistance of the, of the police. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, we'll move on to asking questions from members of the foreign press we'd like to ask the allow the bureau chief of associated press mr jim gomez i'm going to unmute you jim now i think or barnaby are you going to be doing that i can do that too right no i can't J uh, barnes can you unmute jim gomez there you go um jim gomez of associated press i can't, I can't find my recorder <laughs> anyway I'll ask just the same. Good morning, Mayor Biko. Hi, good morning. Yeah. Mayor, we'd like to understand uh, how this amelioration assistance is working at the LGU level. Because I think more than the deadly virus, we can, we can really see possible deaths and extreme restiveness among the, the ranks of the underprivileged if, if they are locked down uh, and they have no food in their homes. So as a city mayor, can you walk us through and give us a clear picture of how this financial rescue is playing out at the LGU level. No? How much money has been made available? And do you, do you have a concern that indigent families are, are falling through the cracks of this massive dole out? Thank you for that question, Sir Jim. I think what we have to realize and what, lo what we as local governments uh, need to realize is that, uh, and remind ourselves constantly, that this crisis is not just the health crisis. Now, obviously, the health aspect of this crisis is the most important part. It's the part that uh, needs the most attention so that we can address it, uh, slow the, the spread of the coronavirus or COVID-19, and hopefully uh, this whole thing ends already as soon as possible. But we can't also forget that this is also a socioeconomic crisis. So there are two parts. It's a health uh, and, and then with, with the social, uh, the social economic crisis and uh, the social amelioration program of the national government, uh, well, we're very thankful for it. We also understand that this is not enough. So uh, as a local government, uh, we're stepping in and whatever the local gov or whatever the national government, uh, the families that the national government is not able to reach with the social amelioration program, uh, because they they. they they were only able to approve 93,000 something families out of maybe you know, 200 plus thousand families that need help and assistance during this time. Uh, so whatever the national government, uh, whoever the national government will not be able to reach, uh, the PASIG local government has its PASIG supplemental social amelioration program or PASIG supplemental SAP. Uh, so it, the assistance won't be as big as what the national government is giving uh, in their SAP program, in, in the national government, it's two batches of 8,000, so 16,000 pesos per family for the 93,000 that were approved. But uh, if, you know, if we don't do our own program, this might cause uh, social unrest. Uh, you know, families who don't receive the assistance will start flocking to barangays uh, and, and, you know, make it, there will be 
uh, stories of patronage and yung palakasan uh, as we say uh, so it's important for us to have our this supplemental program and for this supplemental program all families who need the assistance will be given uh, the said assistance so mayor uh, in your uh, particular situation in, in Pasig City, how many people, how many families underprivileged could not be covered by the amount that was given by the national government and what will you do with them? Okay, uh, first of all, the, the original listing that was used was a 2015 list with around 206,000 families. Now, that's 2015. Right now, our estimated number of families who are uh, in need of assistance would be something like 250,000, uh, well, above or more than 250,000. We don't know the exact number uh, because, uh, unfortunately, before all of this happened, we were actually preparing for our city census already. Uh, so we, if we were able to finish that, then we would have very specific data on what we need uh, or, or, the, or about families in Pasig. Unfortunately, we were not able to do that. So our data is very rough. Uh, or the data that we have is very raw and uh, not detailed. So we estimate we have around 200, at least 250,000 families, uh, probably close to 300,000 families. So subtract 93,000 from that, and that's the number of families that need help. So more than 150,000 families uh, are not included with the national government or the SWD's uh, SAP. And, and my other uh, second question is, uh, what lessons have you learned from that tricycle debate no, that, that is a very famous incident in your city? Uh, what, what lessons have you learned from that, from the perspective of an LGU leader who was trying to respond to local realities, no? but was seen by higher ups as somebody defying national policy? Uh, my stance is, uh, it has remained the same. Uh, I had an opinion based on facts that I saw on the ground. Uh, I had a suggestion, I had a proposal, and if it was shut down, then that's okay. Um, you know, the national government has its own perspective. It can see the perspective. Uh, it can see all local government units at the same time. I, I see what I see here on the ground. Uh, so if, if a proposal of mine is not approved, uh, you know, the IATF says, no, we have to have this uniform proposal for the entire NCR or the entire island of Luzon for that matter. Uh, then as a mayor, I... I, I I will abide by those guidelines. I, I don't take those things personally. Uh, you know, I, I still think that our proposal had merit or the observations that we had uh, had merit. Uh, but ultimately, we will comply with the guidelines in this time that you policy should be uniform across uh, LGUs here in Metro Manila because, you know, we're, we're basically one large community here in NCR. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Jim. Thank you, Mir. I think the next question will be coming from Jonna, uh, member, uh, also a member of the of COCAP and also of the board. Barnes, could you unmute, unmute Jonna, please? <clears throat> Hi, good morning, Mayor. Hello. Can you hear me? Are you in favor or are you inclined to impose a full lockdown in Pasig? Um, a lot of the residents there are discussing the possible shutdown of all establishments, including establishments that sell food. Is there any truth to that? Next question is, if you received a course or are looking into reports... I, uh, sorry, it's a bit noisy. You know, I, I can't quite understand what you're can saying. You hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, that, that's better. Yeah, thanks. Is that, are you in favor or are you inclined to impose a full lockdown in Pasig? Because okay. um, people there are talking about the possible closure of all establishments, even those that are selling um, food. Next question is, have you heard of reports that there are barangays raffling out relief packs from the city government? One specific There are barangays that are? Raffling relief packs. That came from the from, city government? From the city government. One no, area no, that's mentioned not. was Ciudad Grande in Barangay Rosario. They might be raffling their own relief packs, but not relief packs from the city. So sometimes there's a confusion between uh, where the relief packs are coming from. 
but uh, the city, we, we are the ones who handle the, the distribution of those relief packs or the grocery food packs. Uh, with regard to the, uh, the question on full lockdown, um, definitely we will, not, we will not shut down establishments that are selling food and other necessary, necessary supplies. Mas um, magiging magulo yun. That will cause a lot of uh, uh, social unrest. And we, we can't have people starving in their homes. So yes, we will continue to be strict in terms of implementing the stay at home. If you're not doing anything important, uh, if you're not buying food, you have to stay at home. And we've been um, ramping up security measures, uh, increasing check checkpoints, uh, and, and doing other uh, things to become uh, uh, stricter with this. I know. Okay. Are you good with that, Jonna? Next question, I think, will be coming from Barnaby. Is that you who, um, who messaged me for several hosts? Yes. Hi, uh, Mayor Biko. Good morning again. Um, so, uh, a lot of questions uh, revolving around the stricter implementation of the uh, stay-at-home rule. Uh, and this is, does not just apply to Pasig, of course, it applies to the entire Metro Manila. Uh, but there has also been talk of a martial law type of enforcement. Would you describe what you're describing as stricter implementation as some type of martial law enforcement? Are you in favor of it? Uh, if you would describe it as a martial law type of enforcement, do you think that that's necessary? Uh, it really depends what you mean specifically. Uh, you know, I, I hear this term martial law type enforcement being thrown around, uh, but sometimes what's being said is not actually what is being proposed or you know we just like to throw the term martial law around but uh, in in reality first of all here in Pasig there has been no presence of military uh, so far uh, if ever in the future the national government says you know we we will uh, help you with military presence uh, i don't see anything wrong with that per se it depends on what's actually going to happen uh, if it's uh, to help us with enforcement of quarantine and getting people out of the streets, uh, the or people who are loitering in the streets, uh, then th that is you know, we would actually welcome that because if you look at the situation in some areas where again after the round of the peace and order officers, you know, Pasig is very big. We have eight hundred thousand over eight hundred thousand people. Uh, even if we have maybe a thousand peace and order officers, that's not enough. That's a ratio of one is to 800. We also have additional police. Again, we can't watch everyone 24 seven. So if uh, stricter measures and even military presence would come, not necessarily you know, to, to make arrests or whatever, but just to show people that we're serious about this, then I think we should uh, keep an open mind. You know, even if you know, uh, initially, of course, no one wants that. Uh, but again, uh, this is, this is not, uh, we, we, I think we should be careful when we use that term, uh, martial law. Again, what does it really mean? Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. All right. I think Ellen, Ellen Cruz of FOCAP also has a question. Uh, maybe could you... Hi, hello. Yeah. Yes. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Mayor. Uh, my first question is... Um, about there's a there's a I saw a, a, a picture of some stranded uh, construction workers in Ortigas Pasig. Is there a big problem of that though? That many construction workers who who belong to projects that were stopped during the pandemic have been stranded. And what is the Pasig City government doing about this? How big, how big is that problem? And then the other question is, do you favor um, lifting of lockdown after April 30 or you want a modified or a gradual uh, lifting of lockdown? Thank you. Uh, first of all, you mentioned the construction workers who are stranded. And yes, there are construction workers that are stranded, but I have to uh, uh, 
uh, exhort everyone who may be watching right now to be very careful about what we share on social media. Uh, number one, there are instances where what is shared uh, is already outdated. So once, for example, this, this, uh, the, the post about the construction workers that went viral. Actually, by the time that it went viral, we had already addressed the situation. We have the city government gave them two waves of relief goods. Uh, the barangay gave them one wave of relief goods uh, through the effort of our city's congressman. They were also given uh, sacks of rice. Private donors already gave them food. Uh, with the, the employers had already been contacted and the necessary measures had already been uh, uh, done. So again, by the time that the post went viral on social media, the problem had already been addressed. But because it went viral on social media, our hotlines were clogged. People were calling and reporting this to us. Uh, they were sending it to us through private message. All of our staff here uh, that, that we were bombarded with messages asking us to do something about this when in fact the problem was already uh, resolved. So I think we should really be careful about what we share on social media, especially when uh, the it is something that is very myopic or just very uh, zoomed in on one specific problem because it causes an imbalance in the way that we're able to carry out our policy. Uh, we're forced to, of course, we, if someone complains to us, someone reports to us, we have to answer them. Uh, so it, it causes an imbalance in the way that resources are spent. Uh, when we have, 800, again, 800,000 Pasigenios, a big majority of this needing help either financially or some other form of help or social assistance. Uh, so again, uh, let's all try to be careful about what we share. Uh, I discourage people from sharing those individual posts of people needing help, not because we don't want to help them, but because it causes an imbalance in the way resources are spent when we're trying to look at everyone uh, who needs help. Uh, now on the question about a lockdown, uh, we, we will really have to defer on the, to the wisdom of the IATF of the national government uh, because they're the ones who see the picture from uh, from the whole perspective. Uh, you know, we see here in Pasig, uh, it might be a little bit premature to lift to lift the the enhanced community quarantine. Parang uh, sayang if if we lift it now when there are still uh, a high number of cases and increasing number of cases every day then why did we do it in the why did we have that quarantine in the first place so i think uh, of course we need to balance it with the economy uh, the economy is taking a hit both nationally and locally um, so we need to really do a balancing act you know so even while we continue this quarantine we should already start planning for uh, economic stimulus packages uh, here in Pasig, we're actually already planning for our uh, local economic stimulus package uh, for the tail end and until after the quarantine to make sure that the impact is as minimal as possible. All right, are we good with that? Um, I think Raul Dancel of the Straits Times has a question. Uh, okay, Raul. Uh, good morning, Paul Mayor. Morning. Hi. Um, ang question ko lang is how is the mass testing in uh, pa Pasig uh, coming along? And uh, the numbers you have there, does it do, do they align with, uh, no, with uh, what the Department of Health uh, is reporting every day? Yes. Um, uh, we're reporting the same numbers uh, because if, if a person is positive on our end, we report it right away to the Department of Health. At the same time, if it's, let's say, from a DOH hospital or a private hospital, they report to the Department of Health, the information is given to us right away. So uh, the numbers don't really vary. At the end of the day, we, we match our numbers and you know, we, we, we merge the reports. Uh, so there's, there's no problem with that. Um, but of course, we still have to be very careful about how we look at these numbers. Uh, for example, here in Pasig, we have 266 confirmed cases. Now, what does what does this really tell us uh, when we haven't tested yet all of our persons under investigation, suspected or probable? We're just finishing our backlog now. Um, so testing that, that that's the importance of testing. So we know exactly where we're at, uh, and, and you know we arrest the situation uh, as it is. But uh, so uh, for Pasig, we've been ramping up testing uh, the past several days. 
uh, we've multiplied the number of tests by uh, by a, a large number. Uh, so what we're able to do now is we've combined our with, with the resources that are available to us. Uh, we have partnerships uh, not just with the, the public testing center, but uh, also with the medical city, which is a private hospital here in Pasig. Uh, so for PCR testing, uh, we have around 30 to 50 tests per day, but we also use rapid testing. Uh, we are able to do 300 rapid tests per day. So all in all, we have around 350 uh, tests per day or somewhere between two and 3,000. The numbers uh, vary depending on how many tests the medical city is able to accommodate. Uh, they have a minimum that they're able to give us every day, but sometimes they exceed that number. Uh, the rapid test is, depends on how many we're able to deploy, but 300 uh, uh, is the minimum number. So with this uh, increased or ramped up testing in, in Pasig City, we'll be able to, number one, get a clearer picture of uh, the actual COVID-19 situation and the actual COVID-19 numbers here in our city. But also we will, we will be able to do contact tracing much better. Okay. Mayor? Yeah, sorry. Mayor, yung total number of uh, tests niyo, ilan na as of, as of today from total the time you started of, testing? Uh, I don't have the exact number of in, including mm -hmm. those that were cleared. And from, from, you mean from the very beginning? Yeah, uh, I, I was just wondering, ilan, ilan na na pasigenyos ang na test niyo dyan in total? Kasi in cases niyo is 200, right? Our positive or confirmed cases is 266. Mm. So, walang malaman, Mayor, yung ratio ng ano, the yeah, test our, versus the right like positive. Tapos, uh, last question ko, Mayor, is ano, um, do you think yung numbers justify yung mga draconian measures na being implemented by LGUs? Medyo... Uh, specifically, well, the, yeah, the lockdown. Yeah, yung, yung uh, I mean... If we're seeing a low infection rate, right? Why are we seeing special action forces deployed in public markets, diba? Right? And why well, are we it, seeing? You know, uh, my my take on that is that, of course, initially when you see this, uh, we feel that you know, grab uh, this a draconian measure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, let's take a look. What are they actually doing? Uh, what are they actually doing in the markets? Are they doing something wrong, or are they just helping? with the peace and order situation or checking if people who are outside their homes are uh, uh, have a valid reason. You know? So if we see that they're doing their jobs properly and they're not breaking any laws, uh, they're helping with enforcement, okay, a little bit of intimidation maybe, but, but, uh, or, but what are they actually doing? Uh, then there shouldn't be a problem with that. But of course we, uh, we have to watch carefully. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Raul. Just a question that was sent to me. Do you support the proposal of institutionalizing a national ID system? Yes. Um, you know, the, usually the people who are against the national ID system are concerned about privacy. But, you know, if we look at things like this crisis, then we really see the need. Like, for example, here in Pasig, as a mayor, the lack of data and the lack of the ability even to say that this is the number of Pasig residents. Because we don't want to use voters' registration as the basis. But unfortunately, that's the best way we can identify who's a Pasig resident right now. But I don't think that's right. Uh, that you know, If you're a voter, you get benefits. But if you're not a voter, you don't get benefits. I don't think that's right. Um, some people have valid reasons why they were not able to vote and they were delisted from the voters registration list. But that's the best, uh, complete, the most complete data set that we have when it comes to residents. Now, uh, let's say we give benefits to everyone who is living in Pasig right now. We might have a situation that because the, bu the budget of Pasig City is a little bit higher than most other cities, uh, what if by next year we have 2 million residents in Pasig? because they want the benefits that PASI gets. So it, it's very difficult to track individual people. Uh, it's very difficult to track even who are our residents. But if we have a national ID system, this really uh, solves a lot of the problems uh, that, that, that we have regarding this. Uh, so, and uh, you know, contact tracing will be much easier with the national ID system. Uh, I think a lot of the fear 
as long as it's secure and it's encrypted properly and all the necessary security measures are there, uh, there shouldn't really be a problem with privacy in the national ID system. Uh, if, if we really have a issue with privacy, then we shouldn't Google, we shouldn't do all these things in the internet. Probably the, the data that we, that we ex, you know, that uh, uh, the data, the personal data that we expose to the public or, you know, to external sources is much more in what we do on a regular daily basis, like even just Googling or Facebook for that matter. So I think a lot of the fear is misplaced and uh, I would really support a national ID system. It would make crisis management in situations like this much easier. Great. Thank you for that answer. I just have also another question to ask you. We've seen um, reports of civilians getting arrested for their Facebook posts. I think we've seen that in Cebu, um, several who have been, you know, uh, uh, basically, um, what do you make of that? I know that fake news is, um, is a concern, quote, and quote, but what is really, how do you define as an LG official, for example, you talked mm -hmm. about this information. Um, how do you, in your, how do you as a, as a local mayor define the difference between what is false, uh, what right. is criticism, and what is satire? Because you know, some people don't get sat satire, and um, it's very, very to associate fake news with a, a possible real news report. Tell us what your take is on that and how would you approach that from within your city? Well, I, I don't want to comment on other cities, but, but for uh, here in Pasig, we have not uh, filed any cases for this. You know? uh, we have not uh, pursued any cyber libel case or any similar cases. Mm -hmm. But I think at some point we need to draw the line and say that you know, if the content is really malicious, then maybe we need to pursue uh, further action. You know, we, we need to file a case, a criminal case. Uh, you know, there are certain instances here, even here in Pasig, that uh, the, the posts on Facebook are really malicious. They're really trying to cause uh, unrest or trying to confuse people about certain guidelines with the distribution of even the social amelioration program. Uh, you know, unfortunately, some people are still politicking. Uh, unfortunately, there is still a lot of politics going on. At, I'm, I'm just talking about the local level. Uh, this is very unfortunate. Uh, I wish we could just say, okay, guys, stop it. And then everyone would stop. But, you know, that doesn't happen. Uh, here at the local level, there are certain individuals, certain groups who are still trying to capitalize on the situation politically. Uh, you know, so eventually, I guess we, we will have to, but I, I've, I've tried my best or, you know, to be patient with this, you know, uh, respecting free speech. But I think at some point, if the intention is really malicious and trying to cause social unrest, uh, and then it's already a threat to the peace and order situation, then we will have to take uh, actions. Great, thank you. Um, Mika Flor of Ajans France Press, the French news agency has a question. Hi, good good morning, Mayor. Um, good morning. I just wanted to clarify a statement you made earlier. Uh, you mentioned that you think it may be premature to lift the enhanced community quarantine, at least in Pasig City, by um, by April 30. Um, uh, how much time do you need to uh, to further ex to, to flatten the curve? Uh, so are you at least in your LG, you're looking at an extension and how long would that extension be? I'd like to come out and say that, you know, I know exactly how many days this will take or this is the exact uh, thing that we should do. But I think we have, at this point, we have to be honest and leaders uh, like myself need to be honest and say that you know, we really don't know when we'll be able to totally flatten this curve. Uh, although for PASIC, the good news is that our line is fairly uh, straight, yeah, meaning to say it's not exponential. So every day, we've been seeing around 10 or so cases added to our confirmed number. Uh, but the question is, is it because the curve is flattening or is it because we haven't tested enough? So I think before we even talk about lifting quarantine, we have to make sure that this mass testing has, is already up and running and that the initial, at least the initial uh, results 
or the initial stages of this mass testing is already been completed so that we can make an informed decision of whether we should lift uh, partially, completely, or not at all. Uh, Mayor, just a quick follow-up to that. Um, you mentioned that Pasig City now has around uh, 350 tests a day. And uh, I think Pasig, if I'm not mistaken, has a population of around 600 to 700,000 It's around 800 people. plus, yeah. Uh, okay, 800,000. So uh, what's the ideal testing capacity that Pasig City should have in order for us to get a, an ideal picture of where the virus is? Well, um, the, I won't put a ceiling to the number. Uh, obviously, the more, the better. Uh, in a hypothetical situation where we could test every single person, that would be uh, that would be great. But right now, we have the combination of PCR and rapid uh, testing, uh, maybe 350 uh, tests per day. I think this is a good number. It's the the, the, it's a satisfactory number where we can start getting a clear picture because our goal is to be able to test everyone who is a person under investigation, suspected cases, probable cases. We're almost done. Uh, maybe by today or at the latest tomorrow, we'll be done with the backlog. Uh, so we'll know if these are actually positive or not. And then next, we will test our health workers. Uh, that's ongoing right now uh, since they are the most exposed. And then our uh, close contacts you know, so uh, we only have around 100 close contacts right now that are identified. So uh, by the end of uh, this week or early next week, we'll be done with that and we can start testing high-risk sectors like those who are immunocompromised, um, uh, those who are at highest risk, uh, including frontliners, of course. Uh, so, I, I, you know, what exact number, what exact percentage of the population should we test? Uh, I don't know, but the, these, the categories or the prioritization of our testing is very clear. And we'll get to, you know, if, if it's a web, you know, if contact tracing was a web, then we will start in the middle and then branch out as far as possible. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, great. Thank you, uh, Mika. The next question is coming from Mark Salute. Of... Oh, uh, you know, hello. Okay. Hi, good morning. Can yeah. hear you? Yeah, uh, good morning, Mayor. Sorry, uh, hindi pa ako naliligo kaya wala akong picture. Uh, uh, um, we have the information na a group of uh, medical health um, uh, healthcare workers presented you a, a, a concept, yung tinawag nila na Project Hill. So, ang pinaka-concept niya is paglalagay ng field hospitals. Uh, Mayor, uh, ano pong... Uh, uh, lagay na nito, uh, will you adapt it or ano po bang uh, tingin nyo dito? Kailangan pa bang gawin ito ng Pasig? Well, what we've been trying to do here in Pasig uh, in cooperation with the national, uh, everyone from the national to the barangay governments is to come up with a uh, solid healthcare system or a healthcare network uh, you know, that all the needs are there. So from from testing to contact tracing, all the way to uh, treatment and to making sure that our hospitals have the highest possible capacity. So, for instance, we actually de de we have our own quarantine center. Uh, we have our own uh, COVID-19 referral center. That's uh, one of our hospitals we converted into a referral center. Uh, so we're, we're taking a holistic approach and making sure that we have everything that we need per stage of uh, all interventions in, in, in this uh, COVID-19 crisis. Now, what you mentioned specifically is actually a larger community quarantine facility. Now, right now, our quarantine facility is actually a, a motel that was converted into a quarantine facility. We are not yet full here, but we don't want to wait until our facilities are full before we start thinking ahead. So from the start, we have a, uh, uh, a phased plan uh, so we have this first quarantine facility, but we're looking to create a larger quarantine facility and actually uh, construction and the permits and everything that we need from the national government. We're already uh, working on those as well. So we're trying to think always one, if not two or three steps ahead so that before our facilities are at their capacity, we're already trying to increase our medic our, our, the capacity of our public health care system and also at the same time, 
uh, strengthening our network with the private hospitals and the private healthcare system. Um, basically, we just want to keep increasing our capacity, public and private combined, so that uh, we're always a step ahead. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Cliff of um, Cliff Benson, a member of COCAP, also has a question. Hi, uh, Mayor. Good morning. I'm I'm Cliff Benson from uh, Nikkei. Uh, your your city is home to uh, some of the biggest companies in the Philippines, uh, Meralco and um, and uh, JG Summit, the Gokong Way Group. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just wondering if uh, have you talked to them and what kind of concerns have they uh, have they conveyed? Because uh, the debate now has turned to the uh, to the reopening of the uh, of the economy after uh, April 30. Right. Uh, these big businesses, uh, well, uh, to give them credit, they've been very, should they say, low maintenance. They have not asked anything from the government. They have been very cooperative. Uh, and actually, they're the ones who are helping us. Uh, they've been giving, uh, you know, canned goods and other donations to the city uh, for, for our constituents. And so uh, we haven't really had... Uh, uh, much time to talk to them, but they've been very cooperative so far. And again, uh, we have to start thinking, of course, about the, uh, you know, the, the economy, uh, which has already taken a hit. And the longer we do this, obviously, uh, the economy will take a bigger and bigger hit, not just nationally, but for us here at the local level as well. So it's really a tough balancing act. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, we're already starting to plan our economic stimulus package here in Pasig as well. And for uh, just a second uh, question, uh, a follow-up question, uh, Mayor. Uh, for, for medium enterprises, I'm just uh, I'm just wondering if uh, if uh, you know have you come across um, smaller or mid-sized enterprises that that have you know sunk in deep uh, financial distress or perhaps uh, looking to file for uh, for bankruptcy, uh, you know, following this lockdown. Right. We we've, we've tried to help them. <laughs> Excuse me. As much as we can, uh, for example, you know, payment of business taxes to the city and other uh, obligations that they have to the city have been deferred without any interest. Uh, so they don't need to worry about that in the short term. Uh, so we've been trying to do everything that we can. And so, um, um, but we're very thankful uh, to these business people and uh, these businesses uh, who have been very cooperative and. You know, the, the vast majority of the business people that I've talked to have been very, very understanding. And they see that, you know, if, if we don't do this, then the economic impact will be greater. If, you know, if the, if the crisis goes out of control and the virus gets out of hand, it would be worse for everyone. So I think at this point, everyone understands why we're doing this uh, enhanced community quarantine. Uh, again, we're trying to help them as much as we can. Uh, we're planning on ways to help them even more. I, I, I can't announce yet right now because we're still in the planning stages. But uh, as soon as we're able to lift the enhanced community quarantine, we will have an economic stimulus package in place here in Pasig City. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cliff. Uh, moving forward, uh, there's just a question. When we get past this pandemic, hopefully, what systematic measure would you put in place to cope better, if not prevent another pandemic or health crisis like this in your city? Is there anything um, you can put in the... Well, there are a lot of things that come to mind, but number one would really be uh, the data. You know, again, we were already planning for this before this pandemic uh, happened, but unfortunately, we didn't have enough time. You know, we've, this, our administration here in Pasig has only been here for less than a year. We've only been here for several months. So uh, supposed to be our city census or comprehensive survey was going to start April. Uh, and then complete, be completed by May or June. Uh, if we finish this, and we will continue this after the, the lockdown or after the quarantine, uh, what our goal here was to get specific or very detailed and comprehensive data and information about each household, each family in Pasig City. Uh, this would make dealing or management with uh, a crisis like a pandemic much easier uh, like, for example, contact tracing, uh, 
uh, finding people, you know, relief operations would be much, much easier. Uh, so this is the first thing that we're going to continue after this crisis. Great. Okay, last question from Dana before we allow, uh, I think we have a few more minutes before we allow uh, members of the local press to, to ask the questions before we close. Uh, Dana Batnag of The Straits Times. Uh, good morning. I'm Dana Batnas, the Straits Times. Uh, first, I wanted to follow up on Raul's question earlier. He was asking about the 266 that were positive. That's how many percent of the total number of people you've tested? Mm -hmm. So, ilang percent yung 266? Uh, how many have you tested and that's what? 17, 18 percent, 15 percent? You're, uh, uh, we're getting the total number of those who have been tested right now. I think there, that was also a question earlier. We're getting the exact number. Okay, and then the follow-up question to that is the demographics. Do you have an idea uh, in what socioeconomic group the virus is moving? Are there more people infected among class A, B, C, D, E? Uh, are they moving among the workers, the wherever? Initially, it was really the upper class and upper middle class, you know, because these were the people who had uh, uh, travel, uh, you know, who had traveled. So the first maybe 10 or 20 even cases uh, were really uh, upper class, upper middle class. But now with the local transmission and community transmission uh, in, the, in the entire region, uh, there are also members of, uh, of CDE who have been infected. Now, thankfully, we've been able to, with proper contact tracing and proper uh, quarantine, we've been able to somewhat contain this. But uh, again, uh, it's precisely the reason why we can't lift enhanced community quarantine yet. So can I say, can it be said that um, tumataas yung infection ngayon dun sa lower classes? Is that the uh, pattern that you're seeing? Yes, the, the, the number of infections is still increasing. But again, uh, I want to reiterate the good news that you know, every day we've had a, a uh, steady number. Uh, so around 10, at most maybe 15 cases per day are being added to our confirmed cases uh, while we're testing uh, in the hundreds already. So this is very good uh, because that means that the line at, at, at most is a... Uh, a straight line. Uh, the danger would be if it was still exponential at this point. Uh, so that that is good news. Uh, and then eventually we should see the, the, this number or this line being tapered off and then going down. And then um, before, because you were saying you would like to test, right? So at what point, like when you test have what? tested, at what point when you have tested, can you say when you have tested one fourth, one half of the people you would want to test? that you would be comfortable with looking at lifting the lockdown? Kasi di ba yung WHO guidelines, dapat may mga test na, dapat ready na yung hospital system to take care of those who are still getting sick. Um, no. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, the timeline that you're looking at, na, okay, when we have 60%, we're, we're going to look at changing, uh, lifting the lockdown. Do you have a formula? No, um, it, it's not a percentage of the entire population that we're looking at, but we're looking at all 100% of suspected cases should be tested, 100% of probable cases should be tested, 100% of our health workers uh, who have been exposed to the virus or in our hospitals should be tested, 100% of our frontliners should be tested, uh, and 100% of our uh, close contacts should be tested. Okay. Will you want? Will you be willing to lift the lockdown before you get to that one hundred percent? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Me, me, uh, uh, you were saying one hundred percent. Will you be willing to lift the lockdown before you get to that one hundred percent? I, I the, 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 the community program. quarantine is a uh, NCR wide, you know. Uh, so the the decision should be made at the same time for the whole NCR. But if it's just up to you, of course. No, what I, cannot, I cannot make that decision because Pasig is in the middle of NCR. So, you know, if we have one city that lifts, it, it doesn't make any sense. Or One city cannot make that decision for the entire uh, region. 
Okay, well, last question na lang, Jam, sorry. Uh, early, early early. Huh? I said last question so we can allow others also okay. to ask questions, members of the local press, before we close. Yes, thank you. Um, earlier, you tweeted about the DSWD list. You said that when it was given to the LGU, they used only first names and there were no addresses given. Um, can you give more details about that? And the details about sorry um, your your, your uh, mic is not very clear sorry before yung dswd list right, the DSWD kayo, list. when it was given when it was given to the lgu okay. first names lang ang sa list and there were no uh, addresses yeah there were some uh, details you know that it's a bit frustrating but you know, i understand they're also swamped with work uh, they're trying to do the best that they can uh, there are some minor details like that that are somewhat frustrating, but uh, now, now is not the time to point fingers. You know? So we, whatever they gave us, uh, the list that they gave us, we'll, we'll do our best uh, along with our barangay governments to just uh, distribute the, uh, the uh, so social amelioration program uh, funds properly and as fast as we can so that we can start with our supplemental SAP. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll allow the local press to ask a question. Christian is Garev, ABS-CBN. Yes, I have uh, five more minutes. Yes. Mayor, good morning. Christian for ABS-CBN. Hi. Uh, how many of the 93,000 uh, families in Pasig City have actually received their cash aid under the social amelioration program? How many have distribute them? We're almost at 50%. 50%. And then when can you complete it? Kasi baka mangyari, abutan na matapos na yung buong quarantine, hindi pa nakakatanggap yung mga pamilya. Right. Uh, in less than a week, we'll be able to finish our uh, distribution of the DSWD or National Government SAP. And then we will continue with the uh, supplemental social amelioration program of Pasig City. How about the next batch? Po? Diba two months po yan? Kailan po yung distribution ng second batch? Ah, next month po. Next month and then you'll be able to complete that in how many days? In target? It, the, the whole, the 93,000, it takes maybe a week or a little over a week. It, it, it's a big number. Okay. I think we lost Christian. Sorry, last question, I guess. Christian, are you still there? Okay. We lost him. Mayor, if you will allow one last question from JC Gotinga of Rappler. I believe you know him. JC, uh, hold on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good morning, Mayor Vico. Uh, sir, question lang po. Um, how long do you think can the local government, your team, City Hall, uh, go on like this? Are you beginning to feel the strain? And what if the pandemic lasts a year or until the middle of next year, um, kaya pa po ba ng local government, what would be measures if, for example, you begin to feel the strain yourselves? Well, uh, we're all, I think, I speak for all LGUs probably when we say that we're, uh, you know, we're tired, we're also stressed, but, you know, we just have to keep on going. Uh, at this point, we don't have a choice. So whether we're tired or stressed or not, uh, it doesn't matter. We just keep working, uh, keep doing our best to, uh, slow down this uh, COVID-19 or this virus and uh, hopefully uh, if we all do our best and we all help each other then you know, this will uh, end sooner rather than later. Are we good with that JC? Yeah thank you okay. thanks thanks Jam. And okay. on that note, we'd like to thank everyone. Mayor thank you for uh, uh, taking the time to speak to FOCAP and to members of the local press. Uh, the, this uh, forum is recorded. It's uh, live on Facebook of the Foreign uh, Correspondents Association of the Philippines Facebook page. And we have also recorded it. So if you guys want a copy, we will send it to you. So just message me and Barnes. Again, salamat po ulit, Mayor. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. And I hope we'll have another one with you soon. All right. You, no Mayor. problem. Maraming salamat po. Uh, Mayor, uh, if you can also, I don't know if you can see the group chat. Maybe someone from your team can look at it. There are other questions on the group chat that you may want to address or 
you know, at okay. another time. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Thank Thanks. you so much, Mayor. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. We're done. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Salamat uli. Yung Salamat. Thank you. Thank you. Yung recorded uh, maayos ni Barnes mamaya. Kasi hindi ako marunong mag-record. <laughs> <laughs> Stop ko na yung Facebook, ah.